the Battle of Stalingrad in 1942 emerged as a pivotal turning point in World War II. It was one of the longest and most fiercely fought battles in history. For five months, German and Soviet troops engaged in relentless combat, fighting each other street by street, building by building, and even room by room. The battle led to the annihilation of an entire German army, a loss that would leave a gap the Wehrmacht was never able to recover from. The Soviets, leveraging their numerical superiority, ultimately emerged victorious, setting the stage for the eventual end of the war. Stalingrad became a white-hot crucible where victory belonged to those who could adapt their strategies to the brutal and constantly shifting realities on the ground. The battle began on August 23, 1942, with devastating airstrikes from the German Luftwaffe, which at the time was the most powerful air force in the world. It ended with the humiliating defeat of the German forces on February 2, 1943. The battle vividly illustrated the complexities and brutalities of urban warfare, where every inch of ground came at a tremendous cost. The losses on both sides were staggering. However, the most significant outcome of the Battle of Stalingrad was the marked decline of the Nazi army and the shattering of their myth of invincibility. The battle provides many valuable lessons, especially concerning the conduct of warfare in urban environments, making it a topic worthy of reflection for military strategy and history. Background of the Battle Betraying his dictator ally, Joseph Stalin, Adolf Hitler launched a massive offensive, codenamed Operation Barbarossa, at dawn on June 22, 1941. Hitler's ambition was to conquer the Western Soviet Union, with the aim of repopulating the conquered lands with Germans, using the captured population as a slave labor force for the Axis war effort, and seizing the oil reserves of the Caucasus and the agricultural resources of Soviet territories. Despite the failure of the operation to decisively defeat the Soviet Union in a single campaign, by the spring of 1942, the Wehrmacht had captured vast expanses of territory, including Ukraine, Belarus, and the Baltic republics. By that time, the Germans had established their front along a line from Leningrad in the north to Rostov in the south. Encouraged by their initial success, Army Group South was ordered to spearhead a renewed offensive, codenamed Operation Blue. In the summer of 1942, this offensive was directed towards the Caucasus, an oil-rich zone in the southern part of the Soviet Union, with the goal of annexing Baku, located in present-day Azerbaijan, and opening a gateway to the Middle East. The operation was to involve the German 6th, 17th, 1st Panzer, and 4th Panzer armies. However, Adolf Hitler intervened and diverted the effort towards capturing the city of Stalingrad. His purpose was to destroy the city's industrial capacity and block the River Volga, which was a key route from the Caucasus and Caspian Sea to central Russia. Capturing Stalingrad would also make it more difficult for the Allies to deliver, lend-lease, supplies through the Persian Corridor. For Hitler, the capture of Stalingrad was important from an ideological point of view as well, as it bore the name of Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin. As a result, Army Group South was split into two Army Group South A consisting of the 17th Army and 1st Panzer Army, was to advance towards the Caucasus, while Army Group South B, consisting of the 6th Army and 4th Panzer Army, was tasked with moving east towards Stalingrad. The offensive began on June 28, 1942, and with little resistance, made rapid progress. Within a week, the Axis forces formed and cleared two major pockets, northeast of Kharkov and in Rostov Oblast. However, in late July, the Germans encountered stiff resistance from the Soviet bridgeheads west of Kalik. Eventually, the Germans established a bridgehead across the Don River on August 20, 1942, and the 6th Army advanced to within 30 to 40 kilometers of the city of Stalingrad. To the south, Army Group South A pushed deep into the Caucasus, but their advance slowed due to overextended supply lines. Realizing the Germans' intentions, in July 1942, Joseph Stalin planned the defense of Stalingrad, assigning primary responsibility to Lieutenant General Vasily Chukov, the commander of the newly formed 62nd Army. Defending Stalingrad was a matter of prestige for Stalin, and he tasked the 62nd Army with defending the city at all costs. Description of the Battle On August 23, 1942, the German 6th Army reached the outskirts of Stalingrad, marking the beginning of the Battle of Stalingrad. The battle commenced with a heavy bombing of the city by the German Luftwaffe, 
reducing much of Stalingrad to a vast landscape of rubble and charred ruins. The Luftwaffe, with complete control of the skies, also rendered the River Volga unusable for Soviet shipping, cutting off a key supply route. In response, Stalin urgently mobilized all available forces to the east bank of the Volga, even sending troops from distant Siberia. Civilians, including women and children, were pressed into service to prepare the city's defenses, and many of them were sent into battle, often without rifles. By the end of August, Army Group South B had reached the Volga both to the north and south of Stalingrad, effectively encircling the city. The Soviet armies launched two offensives in early September to repel the Germans, but both failed. The Soviet 62nd and 64th Armies anchored their defense within the city, transforming houses, factories, and other buildings into fortified strongpoints. The fighting in the ruined city was intense and desperate, with both sides suffering heavy casualties. Stalin's infamous Order No. 227, which declared not a step back, and there is no land behind the Volga, enforced extreme discipline among Soviet troops. It is estimated that around 14,000 Red Army soldiers were executed for violating the order, a measure taken to maintain strict discipline. As a result, despite their advances, the Germans pushing forward into Stalingrad encountered fierce Soviet resistance and suffered heavy casualties in the brutal urban combat. Operation Uranus, the Soviet Offensive On November 19, 1942, the Red Army launched Operation Uranus, designed to exploit the weaker flanks of the German Sixth Army. Three Soviet armies attacked the northern flank of the Sixth Army, eventually overwhelming the outnumbered, exposed, and poorly equipped Romanian Third Army. On November 20, two additional Soviet armies launched a second offensive to the south of Stalingrad against the Romanian Fourth Army. The Romanian infantry, lacking sufficient anti-tank defenses, was quickly overrun by large numbers of Soviet tanks. According to the Soviet plan, the forces advancing from both the north and south of Stalingrad continued their assault, completing a pincer movement. On November 23, the two Soviet forces met at the town of Kalik, successfully encircling the German 6th Army inside Stalingrad. Approximately 265,000 Axis troops, including around 40,000 Soviet conscripts and volunteers fighting for the Germans, were surrounded. The Red Army promptly formed two defensive fronts, a circumvallation facing inward to prevent escape and a contravallation facing outward to guard against any relief efforts. Adolf Hitler refused to allow the encircled Sixth Army to break out, despite pleas from the German commanders on the ground. Instead, he insisted on maintaining the Sixth Army in Stalingrad, relying on the Luftwaffe to resupply them and planning a relief operation from outside the encirclement. However, the Luftwaffe, far below the required minimum of 500 tons of supplies per day, managed to deliver only an average of 85 tons. This severe shortage of food, fuel, and combat supplies such as ammunition and POL, petroleum, oil, and lubricants, ultimately led to the starvation of German troops and the collapse of their ability to sustain the fight within Stalingrad. Operation Winter Storm Operation Winter Storm was the German attempt to relieve the encircled 6th Army in Stalingrad led by Field Marshal Erich von Manstein. Beginning in early December 1942, the operation aimed to break through Soviet lines from the south and reach the trapped German forces. By December 18, the German relief force had advanced to within 48 kilometers, 30 miles, of the 6th Army's position. However, on December 23, Manstein was forced to abandon the operation due to the launch of a new Soviet offensive, making further progress impossible. Operation Little Saturn. On December 16, 1942, the Soviets launched Operation Little Saturn. The first stage of the operation aimed to thwart German efforts to relieve their encircled troops in Stalingrad. The Soviet forces attacked the Italian 8th Army and other Axis units, quickly pushing them back. In the second stage, the Red Army advanced further west, capturing vast territories previously under Axis control. This operation forced a total re-evaluation of the German situation on the Eastern Front. The attempt to break through to Stalingrad was abandoned, and Army Group A was ordered to withdraw from the Caucasus. By this point, the 6th Army was beyond all hope of German relief. Soviet victory. The German troops inside the Stalingrad pocket, 
now starving and running out of ammunition, retreated from the suburbs into the city itself. Urban warfare resumed, but this time it was the Germans who were pushed back to the banks of the Volga. On January 28, 1943, the Soviet forces split the encircled Germans into three separate pockets. By February 2, 1943, all three pockets had collapsed. Nearly 91,000 exhausted, ill, wounded, and starving German and Axis soldiers were captured, including 3,000 Romanians. Among the prisoners were 22 German generals, marking the end of the Battle of Stalingrad and a decisive Soviet victory that significantly altered the course of World War II. Hitler experienced a humiliating defeat in the Battle of Stalingrad. The aura of invincibility that had surrounded Hitler for so long was gone forever. In Stalingrad alone, German 150,000 troops had been killed. 90,000 more made their long, slow journey into the prison camp. Only 5,000 of them ever returned home. Although his city lay in ruin, Stalin had won. But victory had come at a terrible price. The Soviets lost more men and women during the Stalingrad campaign than Britain and America lost during the entire war. However, there was an overwhelming surge in confidence and belief in victory among the Soviets. A common saying was, you cannot stop an army which has done Stalingrad. In recognition of the determination of its defenders, Stalingrad was awarded the title Hero City in 1945. A colossal monument called the Motherland Calls was erected in 1967 on Mamiev Korgon, the hill overlooking the city where bones and rusty metal splinters can still be found. Stalingrad was the battle that marked the beginning of the end for Nazi Germany. In a speech on November 9, 1944, Hitler himself blamed Stalingrad for Germany's impending doom. Over the next two years, Stalin chased Hitler's armies all the way back to Berlin. In 1945, the Nazi Empire was finally crushed between Britain, America, and their allies in the West and Soviet forces in the East.